ready to go live. Oh my gosh, they're ending the broadcast. We're having trouble streaming to Facebook. This may be an issue. Is it possible the live stream was ended or deleted on Facebook? We keep trying and let you know if it's resolved. Well, well, there. I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll continue on. If if they have a question, they can always call. Right. I'm not the only pharmacist who has anything to say about it. So, I did bring a couple of these are expired pills. So, um, to show you about breaking pills. Um, there are, if anybody, like they, they also on the syllabus asked me to talk about um, medications and like making them easier to take if somebody has difficulty swallowing. So um, there are some medications that cannot be crushed and usually there will even be a sticker on the side or they'll warn you, you know, whatever you do, don't crush this one or chew it. But most things can either be split in half or they could be crushed up and mixed with pudding or applesauce, something like that. Um, there's a product called Thicket that I'm sure if you have anybody who's had trouble swallowing, it makes liquids a little thicker because sometimes thin liquids are more difficult to swallow than thin ones. It doesn't make sense, but it, it works that way. So there's Thicket that you can add to, say, maybe a liquid medication that just isn't going down well. And conversely, there are a lot of oral medications, tablet medications. Oh my gosh, I didn't even see the dog. <laughs> I just saw it walking. <laughs> there are a lot of medications that you can get either pre-made as a, a liquid or it can be compounded into a liquid. And once again, I should get a, a little star for this. Bullsburg Apothecary does do compounding. So if you have any special needs like that, something that needs to be formulated either as a liquid to be taken orally or for an NG tube or something, they would be the folks to talk to to get some help with that. So as far as pills, there is a pill crusher. I know when I was a kid, my mom would give me aspirin. She'd put it between two spoons and smash it up but a lot of tablets are too hard for that or they fly all over the kitchen. Same thing if you try to cut them with a knife. So there's an actual pill crusher. If you don't see it in the pharmacy or in the store, you can just ask, could you order me one? Or you can find them online if you'd like to do that. Um, pill cutters are helpful. They're good for things that aren't scored. So if you have a pill that doesn't have lines or isn't very long, like just a regular round one, you just, and you have two halves. I did learn a trick from a technician who worked in um, home care that if you have a tablet that's scored, let's see if this one works, <clears throat> that if you put it on a, like a countertop or a table and you just push on the ends, it'll break in half. So you don't need a knife for a pill cutter, you know, especially things like this that are oblong. That's kind of hard to fit it in the pill cutter to get it to cut evenly. So just put it down, push, and it breaks. Here. This one's... You want to get that? Oh, sure. Let's try. This one's, this one's a metformin, so it's a little okay. tougher, but it does... Broke when I tried it before. Yeah. There it goes. So that would be a lot easier than trying to chop it. And these are big, so they're difficult to swallow. So if doing a half and a half works better, you can always break them like that. And even without a knife, losing them, just push on the ends and it'll pop in the middle. So that's something that I learned after all these years. Um, as far as medication reconciliation, so that's, that's how, you know, getting the medication to the person and how to actually get it into the person. But what about when they come home from the hospital or, um, 
like a, a what do I want to say, like long-term care and they're discharged, what do you do about their medications? So a lot of times they'll send some with you, but yet not usually very much. So before the person is discharged, I would just make sure that you have the orders because being the pharmacist who gets those orders on Saturday afternoon or Sunday afternoon when it's really hard to get a hold of a prescriber, make sure that they wrote those discharge orders. Then once you have the discharge orders and you have meds at home, what I would do is often they'll schedule an appointment, like say a week later or even a few days later with the primary care, just to check up on everything. Take the medications from home along and even your discharge summary in case they haven't sent it over yet so that they can reconcile that because sometimes they might have changed a dose or they might have decreased or I'm sorry, discontinued something and you don't want the person to keep taking the medication if it's been discontinued. So that's where it's important, like um, a brown bag sort of thing, but do it with either pharmacy or with the doctor's office. Often they'll have a nurse who will go over the meds because where I work at Center Volunteers, that's one of the first things the nurses do after they weigh the patient and measure them, take them in the room and they say, what meds are you taking? And then they compare that with what meds they should be taking. And then the doctor gets a copy of, well, this is what they're supposed to take and this is what they say they're actually taking. So that's a, a good idea to make sure that everybody knows what's going on. Um, as far as the conversation to get your person to let you help them, that's tough sometimes. Um, I know my mom, my, my mom was a nurse and she knew everything. So she didn't always want help with things. And she'd say, oh, well, the, yeah, I don't really need that lisinopril because, you know, the doctor said, no, the doctor wants you to take it. So you, you kind of have to coerce, not coerce them into it, but do it nicely. <laughs> so convince them that they need it. Or sometimes if it comes from someone else, it's better than if you're the, the spouse or the child. It's a lot better if it comes from the nurse or the doctor or the home care nurse. They'll believe them before they believe their daughter, who's a pharmacist. <laughs> so um, that's about what I have. I mean, anything there, there's some they wanted me to do um, like a demonstration of online pill minder kind of things, but that would be kind of difficult to do without a, a live computer and internet. So that I'm sure everybody knows how to use the internet and you can figure that out. Um, if you're looking for information online, there's lots of different places, like you can ask a question. If you get an answer, just make sure it's from a reputable place. So like um, if it's information from the Mayo Clinic, or if it's information from Medline, that sort of thing, that's great. If it's from um, Reddit or, you know, like a group sourcing answer, it may not be the best answer. So just try to look for a reputable medical source. So I like Mayo Clinic because they have lots of information out there. WebMD is okay. They give you some basic things, but they don't go into as much detail as others like Mayo Clinic. Oh no, I've put the puppy to sleep. <laughs> so I'm not getting any questions in chat. Um, although based on this evening's glitches, that might <laughs> that might be why. Um, but I do, I have a question. Sure. Um, The doctor obviously is the first line of, uh, of recommendation of certain medications, but um, does the pharmacist have what role, what rights do you have or what um, can you overrule? Can you question? Can you? Oh, definitely question. Maybe not overrule, but you can make a good argument for your case. So, for example, when I worked at CVS, if I would input an antibiotic for you, it, 
the computer would compare it against all the other prescriptions you've gotten. And then if there's something of concern, it would pop up and it would say, you know, interaction with this other medication. And then it will give you the source. You know, if you want to look it up, you can print it out and you can fax it to the doctor. You can call them. And sometimes, especially when there are multiple doctors involved, they don't even realize that you're taking, I didn't know that the rheumatologist started her on this. So that, so pharmacists are kind of like the gatekeeper. They're the last person before the medication goes home and gets consumed by somebody. So I'm a private care manager and yes. I help people navigate the system. Yes. And I have two clients right now where now like some of them are mail order. Mm -hmm. Some of them, they're going to the pharmacist. Some of them are at the facility. Right. We did a medication reconciliation. Yes. It was crazy. That one lady was on three, three medications that did the same thing but with different names because yes. different doctors were prescribing, different pharmacies were ordering, right. you know. Right. So what's your thoughts on that and how to like navigate that and how to keep that in check? Yeah, that's that's hard. And sometimes the only way I would find out is I would try to fill a prescription and it would come back and it would say too soon or a uh, similar dose was already dispensed. And you're like, what? And then you ask, oh, well, yeah, my mom just got those by mail order. You know, so they come from different locations, but one doctor doesn't know the other one. You know, they're just getting discharged and they're sending them home and they go home with the same sort of thing. So it's really important that somebody else looks over the medications, somebody like Holly or somebody like a home health care nurse, a nurse in the doctor's office, the pharmacist. They may not always have the time at this minute, but they will look over it and get back to you. Yeah. So if you go at five o'clock on Wednesday, they might be a little too busy, but at 730, they can call and say, hey, you know, I looked over these lists and really she shouldn't be taking, you know, lisinopril and metoprolol. They're in the same class. And that's not something that you like, not you, but people who don't know wouldn't know, oh, but it's a different name. So I guess that's what they really wanted to give them. Yeah, and I went to her cardiologist appointment and she was on three different LASIKs. Oh, they were named differently. Right. And the cardiologist sat there and he's like, no wonder we're having problems. Yeah, of course. But we finally got the list together and it took us a little bit to talk to this doctor, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this doctor, like just gathering, all right, what do you, what do you have them on? What do you have them on? Like right. there's like six different lists and then compiling them and then what are you really taking at home? Right. That's the and other question. Goodness, it was just, but here she thought she was really, really ill. It was just she was, the medications were wrong. Once the right. cardiologist adjusted, she's fine. Yeah, that's good. It's, yeah, it's crazy. It's but but I see that even at Center of Volunteers, we, we have doctors who volunteer there, but we also send people out for specialist consultations. And sometimes we get that consultation record back and sometimes we don't get it. And so the nurse has to call and get it. But if the next person looking at, you know, you come for your appointment and you don't mention, or they don't realize that you had a specialist appointment, you get the wrong thing. Like I had someone today that I had to call doctor in Danville because they were changing the person's insulin, but they didn't tell them to stop the old insulin and start the new insulin. And that could have been a real problem. And it's this person's first time around with all this, so they didn't know either. So it's really easy for that to happen as people go to specialists or different practice, or even things like go to Med Express and go home, because they may or may not be able to see the whole medication history. I've had, I had um, a prescription filled and I can't remember what it was for, but it was um, interesting that the pharmacist told me to take that at it as far away as possible from another medication. Yeah. So yes. I guess it was okay to take it in the same day, but not together. Right. right. Yeah. There's uh, some medications the one that comes to mind is tetracycline where you, you can't take it or, or lendronate. Fosamax, that's one that's commonly taken by older people for bone strength. And you want to take it, 
first thing in the morning with eight ounces of water, stay upright because people were taking it and going back to bed and then burning their esophagus because the medication is kind of caustic. So if you lie down, it will burn. And also before any other meds or food, so it can get absorbed and it doesn't interact with anything else. And so it could be for various reasons, but um, tetracycline, if you have ice cream, or if you have uh, a multivitamin that has calcium or iron with it, it will bind to the tetracycline and then it doesn't work so well. They don't use tetracycline quite so much, but they do use doxycycline. Like if you've had a tick bite, you might've had doxycycline. And that's when you can have milk or ice cream during the same day, just don't take the medication with a glass of milk because it binds to it. And then it's the doxycycline isn't doing what it's supposed to do. And the purpose of having food with a particular drug? Because usually it's because they can upset your stomach. Okay. But sometimes it also helps the drug be absorbed. There's a drug called griseofulvin that they use for fungal infections. And it works way better if you take it with fatty food. So they, they'll tell people like, you got a free pass for six weeks. You can have bacon, you can have whatever. Just have something fatty at that meal where you take the medication because it makes it be absorbed by the body better. That's also the, kind of the converse problem with grapefruit juice. There are some medications, especially cholesterol medications that you don't want to take grapefruit juice because the grapefruit juice makes the drug be absorbed more. So instead of getting a 40 milligram dose, you get the equivalent of a 60 milligram dose. Hmm. So that's why, but orange juice doesn't seem to do that. Is there a time limit on that? Like, can you have grapefruit juice? Well, no, that one, they say no, okay. like just forget grapefruit juice, sorry. But because it changes your liver enzymes and it makes it work faster and metabolizes it differently. So. I have a, another favor to ask of you, and yes. that is um, for our virtual audience that missed the beginning of this, could you maybe just go through the pillboxes and the, um, again, so that sure. um, our, our virtual audience can sure. see what they're, they've missed. They're there. <laughs> they're there. <laughs> they are there now. Okay. So we have, as far as, um, aids to help folks remember when to take their medication. There's the typical low tech, you know, one, one compartment a day, there's two compartments, there's a round one that would fit in a, a bag or a purse easily. We have one that we found that has seven days, so it'll do a week. It has four compartments. The top compartment has a sun on it and the bottom has a moon. So it helps people keep you know, they don't want to be taking their sleeping pill. They don't want to turn it upside down and take their sleeping pill at the wrong time of day. And actually one of the doctors said, hey, we should get some of those. So we have those too. And then there's, those are the low tech, long lasting or long lived solutions. Then there are other things you can get online or um, Walmart mostly has this kind of thing. So for the, the cooler things, you'd want to look online. But there's uh, one I found at Walmart that is, it's round. It holds seven days worth of medication, but it only has one compartment. But it does beep and tell you when it's time to take your medication. And that one's only $15. Hmm. Um, there's one that will do a whole month that's 31 days. It has four compartments in each day. So you can set it up for all the meds and it will hold an entire month. It does have a timer on the front, so it will tell you when it's time to take it. And then the one that we talked about earlier that looks like a lot of fun that sits on your kitchen counter and it's called the Hero. And it holds a 90 day supply of up to 10 medications, which is pretty impressive to me. And it's an appliance looking thing. So it wouldn't be too strange if somebody walked in your kitchen, they wouldn't say, huh, is that all your meds? It just looks like Know, like a little coffee maker maybe. Huh. And that that's pretty fabulous. It's just the price is, I had the price here. It's $100 to get it. And then it's like 
30 some dollars a month, but Holly did mention that um, insurances seem to cover it, either at no copay or a $5 copay a month, which would be a real bonus because it keeps track of when you should take it, if you took it, and your caregiver could monitor those records and see that, yes, you did take them, or at least you took them out of the machine. If you gave them to the dog, <laughs> that you can't tell. <laughs> Any other questions? And general so pharmacy? To take medication three mm -hmm. times a day. Mm -hmm. You come take it within a 24 hour period or the eight hour period? Yeah, right? yeah. I know what you mean because if it's three times a day or four times a day, do you get up at two o'clock in the morning to take it? It depends on what it is. Mostly I tell people, just make it fit your schedule. So if you can take one at 8 a.m., one at noon, and one at 8 p.m., or one at 2 p.m., you know, like kind of just split it up, but it's not going to be exactly eight hours. For most things, that's fine. And it's more important that you get the doses in per day than the exact timing, because if you're up at two o'clock taking your pills, you're losing sleep, and that causes other problems. So. And the other thing is, though, as a friend of mine told me, the doctor told him to take his medication three times a day. So he took it 8 a.m., 10 a.m., and noon, and then he was done. <laughs> and he was serious. I'm like, no, 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 no. You need to space it out a little more. Most things work better if they're spaced out six or eight hours, not two hours. Right. <laughs> so it's, it's one of those things you assume people know what you mean, and they not necessarily do us no. no you look like you want to say something no i just i ran into some of that with with my mom when she was alive you know when to take mm -hmm. and how to take it and i'm running into it myself with some of the things that i have to take like i take rebelsis in the morning uh -huh. and that's the opposite yes. of what you said about the Fosamax. right you can only you can't have it's, more than eight uh, eight ounces of water when you take it and right. you've got to wait anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes right which is when you have an issue with with staying hydrated after, overnight it's a pro it's a challenge yeah it, it's hard and i think with the rebelsis the last i read was four ounces of water so it's even worse than eight You're, i know i know exactly what, i mean when i take it in the morning i you know four sips mm -hmm. and that you know just to get it down and right I wish they made it taste better <laughs> but the thing I suggest with that is do it when you very first wake up because I have a medication that I'm supposed to take a half hour before anything else. So take it when you very first wake up and then go about your other things. And it just seems to make the time pass more quickly than sitting there. Oh, another 25 minutes before I can have a cup of coffee. Or, uh, I, I use the bathroom take the medication, take my daughter to work, and then come home. There you go. And then it's a half an hour, at least a half an hour. So. Yeah. Yeah, but that's hard, especially when you know, oh, I can't drink anything for half an hour, and that's when you're especially thirsty. Well, my heart does weird things if I get dehydrated, so I'm going sure. to walk in a fine line. Sometimes. Right, right. So um, it gets to be a challenge. No, I can see that. So you just have to make that 30 minutes go quickly. Yes. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to let our virtual audience and our in-house audience um, that we are enjoying ice cream today. <laughs> and uh, it's nice to have everybody together. I'm hoping next month that we get a full house because the founder of ACAP from North Carolina is coming up and mm -hmm. she will be here. Um, so it's a, uh, it should be a, a, an interesting, uh, an interesting evening. The topic as it stands right now is Medicaid. Um, we're having a few issues with that. So it may end up changing. <laughs> don't, don't we all have a few issues with yes. Medicaid? <laughs> yes, there you go. <laughs> But anyway, um, thank you so much. Sure. And um, uh, 
I will repeat our sponsors because they were cut off at the beginning. And we are thankful for our core sponsors, which are Encompass, Juniper, um, Grain Hospice, and the Office of Aging, Center County Office of Aging. So since we have a little extra time, we have more ice cream back there. Yeah. And um, yeah, and if anybody has any enjoy. questions, even general or insurance or whatever, I can help you with. I'm glad to share my pharmaceutical knowledge <laughs> <laughs> or eat ice cream. There you go. Or break pills in half. You should have to take some ice cream. It's um, 